and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my gold mask series and in this video we're going to work on making the feathers and work on underpainting the rows. If you want to follow along traditionally check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the brushes and the canvas and the paints that I use. The app that we're going to be using for this painting is Corel Painter 2018 for Windows. And we're going to go ahead and start by adding in the black feathers on the mask. So I'm using the textured oils brush because it gives a nice tapered look at the end of each stroke. And I'm just adding a whole bunch of really dark feathers here. and. You can use pure black if you want to, but if you want kind of a deep, rich black that's not as flat, you can use ultramarine blue mixed with burnt sienna and throw in a little bit of dioxazine purple, and that will make a really nice black color, but it will also be deep and rich. And also, if you're following along traditionally, you can use your number eight filbert brush for this or your number six flat brush. And so I'm just adding more feathers here and just tapering them off at the end here, trying to get that nice tapered look that this tapered oils brush can give. And I think it's a fairly new brush. I'm not sure if it's new in this edition, but it's a fairly recently added brush, I think. And so I just want to go ahead and add in the green peacock feathers also that are in with the black feathers and so I'm adjusting my brush size here and just adding in the little green color and you can probably use ultramarine blue and mix it with hooker's green and throw in some white and that'll give you kind of this aqua light green color and I'm still using the tapered oils brush but I'm just have decreased the size of it and made it look like there's really th the really thin feather look to it and then here I want to add some highlights to the black feathers so I'm still using the tapered oils brush but I'm using a really small brush and you can use your long script brush if you want to for this if you're following on traditionally and I'm using kind of a really light blue or a grayish color and you can just take your black mixture and throw in a bunch of white if you want to to kind of get this if you're following along traditionally and you don't want a lot of the strokes to show up but you just want little glints and indications on these black feathers just to make it look like there's some structure to the black feathers and not just a big black blob on your canvas and then I'm using I'm just adding it back and trying to figure out what's the best way to get this highlight on the feathers and I use the, the I tried the oily blender number two just to see what it would do if it would blend it and I'm going through several of the blending brushes and just trying to get that look of the structure of the black feathers and the coarse oily blender number two is kind of given that look it's it's given it sort of a, a glint on the, on the feathers, but I'm not sure that's the final look that I want. But it also works a little bit on the edges of the feathers, but it's not really what I want. So I was still searching, trying to figure out which one would work best. And I do this a lot in painter, actually, and with real brushes, too. I just... I'm always searching for the right brush and I have a ton of different brushes and whenever I paint, whenever I start a painting anyway, I start with a whole bunch of different brushes just trying to find the right one. And so I used it to do the background a little bit to darken it up and then here I'm trying to blend the background out a little bit more again. I just wanted the background to look a little bit darker. And I'm using the one of the particle brushes just to see what it would do there. And it, it gives kind of a nice effect, but it's not exactly what I wanted either. 
So I tried the Sparkle Coarse Oily Blender and then I just went back to tapered oils again, which I seem to be doing that a lot with this project. So I think it's probably going to be one of my favorite brushes pretty soon. So I added, I just added the dark in that way using the, the tapered oils brush. And if you're following along traditionally and you want the background darker, just go back over it with your number 10 bristle brush or one of your larger brushes. And so I'm just kind of add, I'm throwing in patches of black here too with the tapered oils brush just to, to get the blue darker and to make the background look darker. And then I decided to try grainy water too. And then I found the palette knife number two, which is actually pretty good. It makes kind of a really neat sort of a tapered end also and, and really highly textured. And I decided that I liked it pretty good. And so I started using it on the feathers and drawing out the ends of the feathers and, and making them look really tapered. And it worked pretty nicely for that. So then I went ahead and added the gray in with my tapered oils and then used the palette knife number two on the feathers. And that gave it finally the look that I wanted. And I also used it a little bit on the green feathers just to give it a neat effect that way. It doesn't look exactly like the photo reference, but that's fine. You don't have to have it exactly like the photo reference. It's just sort of a guideline. And here I'm going to go ahead and underpaint the rose. And I'm using kind of a yellow ochre color for that too. And since it's going to be a white rose, the shadows in the rose are kind of going to be beige colors and maybe a, a little bit of purples, but it's kind of a, a yellowish look that the white rose is going to have. So I'm using the palette knife number two again, just to smooth it out and, and give it that really neat look. I don't want a real hard edge to the anything yet. I'm just trying to keep things soft because hard edges are hard to cover up, especially if you're painting traditionally. So if you want to do the underpainting for the rose, traditionally use your number eight filbert or your number six flat brush. And here I'm adding in the leaves that are on the rose and I'm using kind of a really light pink color and just adding in the basic shape right now. We're not getting highly detailed or anything. We're just kind of doing the underpainting. So, and then I'm working a little bit on the, the shape of the mask, just the, the edges of it a little bit, trying to correct the shape of it and get the edges a little bit more accurate here. And I'm adding, using a little bit of highlight color and you can use your short script brush for this. If you're following along traditionally, you're just kind of working on the format right here. And I'm trying to get the eye holes of the mask and correct the shapes of the eye holes and just kind of get the overall look of the mask here. And then I went back to the working on the rows and I'm adding a little bit more of the highlight color. And so this is going to be a yellow ochre color with lots of white in it. And right now I'm not looking for big structure. We're just trying to do the underpainting for the rose. So this is the end of our gold mask series, part two. And in part three, I'm going to go ahead and work some more on the rose and also the, the feathers and the mask design. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.